Hey guys, today we are going to discuss an interesting topic. Do Magic the Gathering cards have value? And can they hold value? So this is a topic I decided to make based on the average price of a booster box. So assuming that you opened a booster box of Alpha when it was released, you can expect $37,000 of cards on average. If you opened a booster box of Beta, you can expect $23,000 of cards on average. So if you could go back in time and start opening some of those boxes, even opened, that is your average value of a box. Now, Unlimited, we still see the possibility of getting Power 9, so it's still $7,500. But when we go to Revised, we still have the Dual Lands, but we no longer have the Power 9. So that's why you see a plummet from 7,400 to 574. Still a good chance that you can get a blue dual land, but not, no chance of getting the power nine, which you could have got in the unlimited. Then here is when we see the steepest decline from revised to fourth edition. Fourth edition was terrible. It was very, very bad. And fifth edition was a little bit better. Classic sixth edition was a tiny bit better. 8th edition was good because it was in the modern realm, so a lot of those cards have some modern playability. 9th was very good as well, 10th was good. Foil prices for those editions, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th actually are quite valuable. So then we get into M10, $99 a box. And here's the crazy one, if you can get an M11 box for let's say $80, $90, the average value TCG mids of that box is $138. That's quite incredible because that's not a price I believed it would be at. Now we go all the way to Magic Origins. Magic Origins is only worth $35 on an average box. There was no good cards in Magic Origins and even the good cards are not being played in the modern format. So let's talk about from the alpha set of $36,000 plus dollars all the way to the last core set, Magic Origins, of $35. That's pretty drastic. I would not have imagined such a, what is that? That's a 100 multiplier? A, no, that's a 1,000. That's a multiplier of a 1,000? Yeah, it's a multiplier of a 1,000 from alpha till we, where we are today. So if you're trying to make money from holding your cards, from collecting Magic Gathering, it's probably not the hobby today. Now let's talk about Arabian Nights was 7,000. And here's an interesting one, Fallen Empires is $3. So if you open a box of Fallen Empires, the average TCG mid price of what you could sell, so this is cards more than a dollar, is $3. The Dark has gone up a little bit. Homelands was probably one of the worst sets in existence uh, at $30. Ice Age, Ice Age is also $30, Alliance is $325 because it has a lot of uh, Force of Whales. At Uncommon, you're likely to get a few from a box. Coast Snap is also surprisingly high at $302 because of a certain bobble at Uncommon. Sounds familiar, right? Mirage is good, Visions, Weatherlight, all about correct. Now, here's one of the things that I found surprising. The average box of Urza Saga, th this box goes for $800, is only $255 had you opened it. So imagine that you were playing a lot of Urza Saga, you're paying $90 a box, let's say $90 to $100 a box. You're actually making value from it because you can get the Cradle, uh, which is pretty much pays for your box. You can get a lot of cards still on their reserve list, uh, which are very good long-term holds. So if you were playing during Urza Saga, it's not the same as Alpha and Beta, but overall, you still would have a very good experience because the cards that you played with when you were at that age, I think Urza Saga was, I want to say I was in elementary school, so a long time ago. Macadian Mask happened right after Urza Saga. It was terrible. Invasion was terrible. Odyssey was bad. Onslaught used to be better because of the fetch lands, but it was also bad. It wasn't until we got to Meriden that it became a little bit better. So let's talk about this again. You see Ice Age was kind of good with the Alliance and Code Snap. 
Coach Snap, not really part of Ice Age, but still. Mirage, semi-good. Tempest got better. Urza Saga was that peak. Then we go to Mask, Invasion, Odyssey, and Onslaught, which were, were terrible sets. And Meriden. So Meriden was a very good set. Now, the set that people criticize very heavily, Kamagawa, is actually a very decent set, especially Champions. If you can get a box of Champions, I know this is very difficult to say because these boxes are $400, $500 now, and it's never good to open a box. Uh, you should treat boxes as older boxes as collectible items. But then we get to Ravnica with the reprints has been absolutely diminished. It's been destroyed as pretty much all these reprint sets have. Future site, you do have the Tomagorf still holding up price very nicely. Then you get into a the Zendikar. The Zendikar fetch land should be collapsing very soon, if not. And then the Jace the Mind Sculptor, as well as the Adrazi. So you see health there. Where you do not see health, you see a downturn during Innistrad. And this sounds very strange to most people because most people believe Innistrad is incredibly valuable as a set. The average booster box opening of Innistrad itself is $104. That's it. I don't know where people are getting $200 a box or, and it will fall even more. Dark Ascension, $53 a box. So if you were to buy a box of Dark Ascension, you can get it online for about $90. You're still out $40 a box, and it's not something... So out of all of these boxes we just talked about, the only surprising one is M11 in terms of, okay, if you open a box, can you get the value back? Or on the flip side, if you play during this period, will your cards have value? The answer is no. Your cards since Innistrad have just tanked. So look at Innistrad, look at RTR, look at uh, Born of the Gods at $24 a box. Dragon Mage is $35 a box. Dark Ascendant is 53 And people say, oh, Cons of Tarkir. Well, Cons of Tarkir, it turns out that the average box price is not worth that much because outside the Festlands, there's no value. And this is, was incredibly, incredibly surprising to see these prices. So now when you go to Battle, Shadows, Kaladesh, remember, these are in standard still. These are standard sets, so they will collapse even more to the point of Magic Origins at $35. Just to repeat what is, has happened, they printed so much of these recent card sets that there's no way they can hold value long term. There is just none. Now, there might be some reprint issues. You might argue, yes, it's mainly because they reprint all the new stuff. But I would argue that the concept and the MTG Finance belief that Magic cards will always go up in price is no longer, no longer applies starting from Scars of Meriden on. As you can see, these box prices, people believe Innistrad as one of the most beloved sets of all time, but the average price per boosted box open is still $104 today. Dark Ascension, $53. Born of the Gods, 24. Dragon Mates, 35. These Battle for Zendikar, $39. And that is crazy enough. So let's talk about reprint sets. Chronicles at 121. Modern Masters Original, still at a healthy 448. Modern Masters 2015, 210. Eternal Masters, only 173, which is TCG mids. So storage cannot crack boxes at 170 and make profit anymore because there's no profit to be made. Now, Modern Master 2017 is 192, but again, these are mid, so these are not going to be for what you normally would sell them at. And here we also get an interesting outlook on dual decks and what is happening here. Jace has that one suspend card. And Divine vs. Demonic has the very beautiful Demonic Tutor. But outside of that, Elspeth, Knight vs. Dragons, Ajani, when you you see a certain period of time when Soren and Heroes and Jace and Speed, and these are all recent dual decks. And they are all under, well, Zendikar vs. Adrazi is not under it. But the most recent ones are all under the price that you would pay retail for it. 
and that's quite interesting. So let's talk about conspiracy at $68 for the older boxes and $77 for the newer boxes. This is what I like in the buy. I do like conspiracy at $77 because if you can get the box for around 80, then that's very good for you because the box value should, worst case scenario, you have to open it, will be equivalent TCG mids to what you paid for it, which is not true for most of these boxes here. If you buy a box of Caladas, you hope to get $65 TCG mids from that $100 box. And Conspiracy Take the Crown has been largely ignored. That is a clear buy, in my opinion, uh, at the current stage in time when it's around $80, as many as you wanted. I think you can get them for $75 online. That's what I've been getting them at. Now, Commander 2013, you can see that it is much cheaper than Commander, original Commander. And 14 is a lot cheaper, 15 is slightly cheaper, and 16 is still high, but it's based on, you know, it's based on the limited availability right now, and there will be more and more supply. So when the question comes up of, is Magic the Gathering cards valuable today? If you were to buy a new set today, the answer is it has no chance of holding value. It just does not. You, do you see this trend that is going? Older Magic cards and what MTG Finance would have you believe is you can just buy any Magic card and it will go up in value. And there used to be a time where that was true. But not today. Not with the reprints and not with the sets as weak as they are. Now, you might ask, I thought the problem was the sets are too strong in standard. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that in a vacuum, they're very strong. But outside that vacuum, if you post it in Legacy or Modern, they have no playability in those formats at all. How can they ever compete against the Dual Lands? How can they ever compete against the Power 9? They cannot. Even more recent sets like Urza Saga has very broken cards compared to what we have in Kaladas and A for Revolt. Overall, the sets are much, much weaker and less worth money today than they have ever been, and I don't see that trend happening. So if you were to buy a box at retail, MSRP 140, I believe, or if you would buy a dual deck, or you buy a commander deck, there's very limited, there's almost no possibility of you holding that for 10 years and making money. When people were buying boxes for RTR, the average box of an RTR, if you were to open it, booster box is $62. How do you expect that box to ever get above 80 or 90? It cannot get above that price because it's expected value is so low. Now, a lot of people are trying to sell these older boxes that are more limited. Let's say they're trying to sell an invasion box for 200. Well, a wise investor or wise MTG finance person would say, no, I'm going to stay away from that box because that has no type of value like that. Makedian mask is very expensive. Uh, and as you go go older and older, even Ice Age boxes are very expensive, but the average booster box that you would open from Ice Age is $30. That's it. There's nothing left for me to say. Why would you invest in Ice Age boxes when the box value is $30? Why would you invest in, you know, older box, like Mirage, right? People love this set and... But the average box that you would open is $87. Is it worth it to pay $600, $800 for a box? No. The answer is quite frankly no. Anyway, hopefully you guys got some information from here. And leave me a comment below if you believe I'm wrong about it. I did make a blanket statement. And as with all blanket statements, there are exceptions to it. But I would say boxes from Innistrad on are not worth the MSRP for buying them, and they're not even worth the $100 to buy a box. Um, so if you play during Innistrad and you open a thousand boxes, you are basically break even a TCG player and be sold, you would probably lose about 60% of that. So it's pretty bad for you. But if you bought 100 boxes of Alpha at 100 bucks, no matter what you pulled, you would be okay. You'd be absolutely be okay. And a lot of people are saying that because Alpha was so good, something like uh, Kaladesh would be very good too. That's just not the case. The value is not there to open these boxes. The value is not there long-term wise of these boxes. And overall, uh, it, it, play Magic because you love playing Magic. 
do not play as an investment as a long-term mutual fund. It's a terrible, terrible investment. Anyway, bye guys.